Futures are pointing higher this morning as we kick off the biggest week of economic data and earnings for the month. All three major market gauges hoping to keep the momentum going. Every investor, really, after ending last week in the green, it was the best week for the Dow and S&P in a month. Joining me now through the cycle, President John Lonsky. And, John, you, you can't look at this, the stock market without looking at Treasury yields. Uh, you look at the 10-year, it's the yields up a little bit ahead of the Federal Reserve two-day meeting, but it's still below the two-year yield. So, again, that inverted yield curve. And the Fed's expected to raise by another 75 basis points to combat soaring inflation. So that will take the Fed funds rate to 2.5% when consumer inflation is above 9%. Well, what we have here, you know, as you said, is a situation that shows an inverted Treasury yield curve in the past, an inverted Treasury yield curve, that is, a two-year yield above the 10-year yield has often been followed by a recession. I think a recession is all but inevitable uh, during the next 12 months at some point. I want to add, you know, we're talking about the GDP report that mm -hmm. will be coming out on uh, Thursday. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at best, a very slight gain. Back at the June meeting of the FOMC, the FOMC predicted that real GDP would grow by 1.7 percent year over year at the end of 2022. Right now, it looks as though that estimate is way too high. It's going to be closer to one half of 1 percent at best. And that tells me that we're perhaps nearing the end of this current series of Fed rate hikes. We're at the end? Well, I think it's going to go no higher than 2.88%. Uh, so we maybe have, after today, another 50 basis points. And that's as, about as far as the Fed could go. No. If the 10-year Treasury yield uh, stays close to 2.8%, by that time, we'll have Fed funds above the 10-year yield, and that will give the Fed a clear indication that it should step back for the time being and see whether or not the Treasury bond market has it correct. The Treasury well, yield is at 2.8%, uh, because the Treasury bond market believes that inflation will subside. It, it doesn't buy into well, this me... argument that inflation expectations are rising. Let me throw this out there. Instead of using interest rates, why doesn't the Fed actually really start reducing its balance sheet and selling off some treasury, longer term treasuries, just selling them to raise uh, the yield on the uh, longer end as the, the two years at 3 percent, but sell longer term treasuries to make sure those yields are higher than the shorter end? Well, you know, right now, the, the Fed is passively reducing its holdings of longer-term Treasury bonds. They're going down slowly. That started in June. And when this began, that 10-year yield was at 3.5%. Uh, you know, the consensus forecast was that in this quarter, the 10-year yield would be averaging about 3.25%. Instead, it's at 2.8%. It's at 2.8% because the market believes a recession is coming. The world economy looks lousy, and the demand destruction that's taking place will help bring about a lower rate of inflation, albeit at the cost of an economic downturn and ultimately a significantly higher U.S. unemployment rate. Well, how low will inflation go then? And compare that to how bad does the economy get? You've got 9 percent inflation. What kind of recession do you need to bring that down in line to... 2%, 4% even. Okay, 4% inflation is not going to happen perhaps until the second half of uh, 2023 uh, at, at the earliest. I think that's going to be, it's going to be a, an arduous process. What worries me is that even if inflation subsides, say it's 7% by the end of this year, at that same point in time, I would expect that wage growth might be less than 5%. So we're going to have this extended episode of where inflation is outrunning wages. And because of that, you cannot help but avoid a reduction in real consumer spending. Mm -hmm. And it's that contraction of real consumer spending that pushes the economy over the cliff. Nancy, and, and both John and Nancy, I want to get to this. I'm fascinated with this story. It's on, in the Wall Street Journal today. Wealthy Americans are still borrowing. This is the headline. Rich Americans keep borrowing, defying economic gloom. This is based on Bank of America and Morgan Stanley 
recording double digit growth in loans to their wealth management clients in the second quarter. This as I, I so Nancy, I, I know you read this article. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just curious what you think of it as if it because it reads like they don't see economic gloom, but maybe they're borrowing because they're feeling the crunch, if if you will. Well, Dagan, I think there's a couple things going on. I mean, we know that the government is collecting record tax receipts this year. And one of the reasons for that is that many investors on the on the back of thinking that Build Back Better was going to pass took gains in 2021. So now they're paying back their, their tax bills. And we have mm -hmm. clients who are borrowing against their portfolios to pay back their, their taxes. But also, I think there's opportunities. It's a very cheap way uh, to make purchases, very cheap source of funds, much cheaper than if you went out and bought a mortgage. And so we have clients that are also um, investing in homes and businesses using their margin account. So I, I think it's a tale of two consumers, the very wealthy as represented in American Express's earnings versus uh, the not so very wealthy, and those have been represented in some of the the bank earnings that we see. John, but you could also view this as as recklessness, and reckless even on the part of the financial firms, because if you have somebody who has a ten million dollar portfolio and all of a sudden it goes to two million, that is a very risky loan. It's risky for the borrower and the lender. And my central issue is with this downdraft in asset prices, the bigger question about whether this is super dangerous is what kind of debt is is behind these assets that have declined in price. John, final well, word to you. Yeah, I can tell you one thing. It's not mortgage debt. I think uh, mortgage applications for refinancings are down 80 percent, 80 percent from a year ago. Who knows? Maybe they're trying to continue to, to, fu uh, to fund their uh, standard of living uh, through mm -hmm. these loans. It's not entirely clear to me, but it's perhaps not, not the greatest idea right now or, uh, to go ahead and borrow money in order to purchase stocks on the assumption that the equity market's going to be recovering strongly later this year. Well, the, these margin loans are, are priced like, many of them are priced like prime. So may you say the Fed's going to stop at under 3% in the Fed funds rate, but if it goes to 5, you're looking at 7, you know, maybe a 7% rate on your short-term borrowing. So that that can bite you too. And let's not forget, why will the Fed stop raising rates at Fed funds under 3%. That's because the U.S. economy is either about to tank or right. is already sinking. Great to see you. John Lonsky. Thank you. Always a pleasure. We'll be right back.